support compound assignment operators that allow you to combine an assignment with an arithmetic operation. There are 10 of these operators. They are for addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, bitwise shift left, bitwise shift right, bitwise and, bitwise or, and bitwise exclusive or. Let's take a look at how these work. Let's make a working copy of our working.cpp and paste that into our working project. I'll double click on that and open it up. So I'm gonna come in here and declare a couple of integers, int x and int y. And if I give them values, I'll say x equals five and y equals 10. And now if I wanted to add x to y and put the result in x, I could say something like x equals x plus y. And then I could print that out. I'll just use a printf for this. x is percent %d. And now our result should be something like 15. So I'll save that and run it, and it says x is 15. The equivalent way to do this with a compound assignment operator is to say x plus equals y. It looks much simpler and cleaner, and it gives us the same result. Save it and run it, and x is still 15. There's one important distinction, though. In this other expression, and I'll just go ahead and I'll put them both here, so you can see them both really clearly. In x equals x plus y, the x is actually evaluated twice. And in x plus equals y, x is only evaluated once. So here's an illustration of how this can have impact. I'm going to create a very contrived function here. It's going to return an integer reference. And remember, references were covered in our last chapter. And I'm going to pass it an integer reference. And I'm just going to printf inside of it. Actually, we can use a puts for this. Puts. This is f. And I'm just going to return an incremented i. So it'll increment it first and then return it. So whatever you pass this function, it gets incremented and returned. But what gets incremented and returned is actually a reference to the original variable. So the original variable itself will be what's returned. All right? And so down here, I'm just going to delete these for now, and I'll delete that for now. And down here, if I say f of x plus equals 1, what it's doing is it's taking that x and it's incrementing it out here and also incrementing it inside of the function. So the result should be 7, right? So we'll save that and run it. And the result is 7. And actually, x itself is also 7 at this point. So I'll just make a working copy of this. And I'll say x is, and I'll just put x there. And this one here is actually result. It's not x. Right? And so if I save that and run it, we see that x is now 7. And this is f. That means that we've evaluated that function once. Now, if I were to do this instead and say f of x equals f of x plus 1, now this function is getting evaluated twice, right? If I save that and run it, result is 8. And x is 8. So that's to say that this, x equals x plus y, is not the same as x plus equals y. Ostensibly, they do the same thing, but one of them evaluates x twice and one of them evaluates x only once. This can become significant in cases where you're using objects and what is going on inside of those objects may not be terribly apparent. And you need to know that when you're using a compound operator, you're only evaluating that left-hand side once, whereas when you're using the separate operators for the mathematical operation and the assignment, that you're actually evaluating that left-hand side twice. So the compound assignment operators, as we know, they're available for the 10 operators, plus, minus, uh, multiplication, division, modulus, shift left, shift right, and the three bitwise logical operators, and or, and exclusive or. In most cases, using the compound operator will be an advantage in that side effects are reduced. You just need to be aware of how it works. These compound assignment operators are there for convenience. Feel free to use them whenever you would use the equivalent expression.